I would definitely be in prison. I would definitely. Because I would not have quit using myself if drug court wasn't there, so. And I mean, that would, uh, that would just be horrible because he would not, my son would not have the life he has or anything like that, so. Once I was 18, I started using then, and, and then just from then, so fast I got in trouble, just like that, so, right off the bat. Emily Linville was addicted to prescription painkillers. It ran in the family. Her mom and sister were too. She got her first chance when she was sentenced to drug court instead of prison, but she kept using. And, but basically, when you get in there, you're just, find me any way to get out. I mean, you're, just get me out of here, you know, you'll take anything, pretty much. I mean, a lot of people just don't know how hard drug court's really going to be. Then Linville got another chance, again in drug court. She learned her lessons. This time, she was going to graduate. And I'll graduate at the end of this month. Um, you know, in prison, you're not really doing that. You're not working, you're just sitting there, you're not going to real NA meetings and stuff like that or dealing with everyday stress or anything like that. And out here you have to deal with all that without using, you know, so it teaches you how to do that. What we still do as a state though is we incarcerate many low-risk, nonviolent female offenders as opposed to having them in these alternatives to incarceration in the community. The result is, is that we spend a whole lot more money incarcerating them than we would spend in alternatives to incarceration in the community. Baby doing okay? Yep, it's doing good. <coughs> Ms. Linville is graduating the end of this month. Who's your attorney? Public defender. I'd love to see you. I don't want to see you back in orange, no. <laughs> but i love to see any of the ladies and gentlemen who have successfully completed this program because it encourages all of us to know that people can be clean and sober and they do it every single day. All right. You need anything? No, nope. doing good. I'm so very proud of Thank you. Thank you. Take care. All right. But now that, now that I've quit using and know how to live my life without using, everything's just so much easier. So why wouldn't we want to keep them in the community and help them access resources to address their addiction, um, to work with their families, uh, rather than to send them to prison uh, where they may or may not receive any um, treatment and services at all? Women in Recovery is a program within Tulsa's Children and Family Services in partnership with the George Kaiser Family Foundation. Women who fit the criteria might be selected to go here instead of prison. They provide substance abuse treatment and life skills to help women make a life change. And the results so far have been promising. Since it began uh, 18 months ago, 14 women have graduated. Those 14 women have secured employment, have been sober for at least a year, have reunified with their families where they can, um, and have become successful in our community. Um, can I say that this program is the answer? Not yet. It's a new program, but our early results are very positive. Um, that we'll be able to save the state thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of dollars, um, and also getting her to be working again and back into being a tax-paying, law-abiding citizen reunited with their children. Those are not options when you're in a prison. For the women in Women in Recovery, which is probably, um, probably truly the most expensive alternative to incarceration in terms of the cost per year, the, the sentences that those women are facing are somewhere between seven and ten years on average. And so let's say that they spend five years in prison. So if we take that and multiply it times 15000 then we're talking about $75,000. If Women in Recovery costs 18000 for a year, versus 75000 for incarceration, it's pretty obvious that it's a savings. When you're talking about drug court and mental health court and community sentencing and probation, all of those are, are far less expensive. Why hasn't it been done um, to date? I don't really know the answer to that. Um, because when I'm out visiting with people, when I'm out talking to different groups, everyone understands the issue and how what we're doing isn't uh, the right answer how we can be much more successful as a community, as a state, by providing services to these women and children. 
Um, incarceration isn't the answer. Um, and I think we need to begin looking at these alternative and diversion programs and how to expand them and develop them and make them consistent around our state.